say about the people and being around here. My really lovely to see you all here tonight. Um, before I left the house, I said to my niece, oh, I'm feeling a bit nervous, and she said, Auntie, don't feel nervous, just imagine everyone in their pants. <laughs> so, I've uh, got some very nice underwear on the show tonight. Yeah, looking really good, all of you. Um, but I'm not, thankfully, going to be speaking to you about pants. I'm going to be speaking to you about Made in Hackney. So, Made in Hackney is the UK's only, to our knowledge, eco-community kitchen. Uh, we set it up in October 2012 and it was a response to a series of global crises basically um, and we define them as such. How are we going to feed a growing global population in an ethical and environmentally sustainable way? How are we going to reverse spiralling chronic ill health? particularly in the supposed developed nations, I hate the term developed nations, because what does that mean? But in the richer nations, we're seeing spiralling ill health, particularly conditions such as diabetes, heart conditions, obesity, etc., or lifestyle-induced diseases. And then the last thing we really wanted the project to address was health inequalities. What you find in countries such as England and the rest of Europe and America, it is the poorer sections of society, the more marginalised, the more vulnerable, that do suffer from those illnesses in the largest numbers. Not exclusively, we all know that, but certainly in the largest numbers. So, that's what we wanted to address. No, no, no small challenge. Um, we didn't have much money and we certainly didn't have an awful lot of influence back in 2012. So, what did we decide to do? We decided to um, give people skills. So to give people the practical cookery, food growing, shopping, preserving, food skills so that they can lead healthier lives. We decided that the project should be open to absolutely everyone, because pretty much everyone, despite your income, despite your lifestyle, could do with making these sorts of changes to your diet. So we wanted it to be open to everyone, but we made a conscious decision that we would really try and reach the hardest to reach people, so the vulnerable, the marginalised, the disadvantaged, and we would focus the core of our programme on these groups. The last thing we decided we would do is that we would have a unapologetically progressive food policy. And we did some research and found that a lot of community food projects, as much as they were wonderful and came from the heart, they were sadly lacking when it came to environmental credentials and when it came to health. There was, you know, a lot of food being made in a lovely social setting, but it wasn't food that was particularly good for people or good for the planet. So we decided to have a food policy that was local as much as possible, seasonal as much as possible, organic as much as budget was practical for the group we were working with, but always and absolutely non-negotiable 100% plant-based, so obviously vegan. So that's what we decided to do. It sounded good on paper, but how do we go about turning that into practice? Because those four food policies, they're actually perceived as being quite elitist. They're actually perceived as being very expensive. Um, so how are we going to take those food concepts essentially to the front line of food intervention? You know, what we, you know, got to remember is that if you're turning up to a youth centre or a pensioners club with a bag of kale and some sprouted mung beans, you better have some really good banter and some really good recipes or you are going to get chased out of that venue pretty quickly. So we knew it was quite a tough gig what we were trying to do, work with these types of groups and be uncompromising on our food policy. But that's what we wanted to do. Because what we need to remember is Despite this amazing surge in the popularity of veganism and the sort of understanding of why people are vegan and why, you know, the good reasons behind it, the sorts of groups we work with and the organisations we wanted to reach, the word vegan still means extreme, cultish, bland, possibly dangerous. Um, even last week, and I know this for a fact, an NHS dietitian leading an early years training programme for a nursery, 
said that any diet that included free, a free from approach, so no gluten or no sugar or vegan, that didn't, wasn't accompanied with a doctor's note, should be viewed as a child protection issue. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we obviously needed to be in these sorts of areas, like children's centres, we needed to be in doctor's surgeries, we needed to be in community centres, we needed to be in pensioners' clubs. So all the sorts of venues that might possibly be a little bit hostile to the word vegan for various reasons. So, what we decided to do is sort of do away with the word vegan altogether for the bulk of our community work and just focus on the phrase plant-based and also focus on positive phrases that describe the benefits of vegan food. So instead of saying vegan, what we would often say is things like healthy, affordable, nutritious food that's good for people and planet. Can't really argue with that. <laughs> so most people hear that and think, yeah, we want in, we want our community group to experience that, we want to try that. So it's, yeah, it's quite a good, for us it's proved quite a good approach. We've also, with our promotions in the community, we make sure that we focus on cookery course themes. So again, if we did a poster saying vegan cookery course, no one would come if we pinned that up at the Hackney Caribbean Elderly Association. <laughs> they wouldn't, they wouldn't come. And the same in most of the community centres we work in, etc. So instead, our posters say things like international cuisine, cooking for life, Hackney takeaway, where people learn to make healthy versions of their favourite takeaway food. So we very much focus on food themes and sort of fun connection points that people can relate to. We also, obviously this is essential for what we do, for it working. We have amazing teachers, which are really well trained, really awesome volunteers supporting them. There's no judgement in the class, so it's very much about sharing, talking about what food you eat at home. If someone talks about, oh I had an awesome steak on Wednesday, we can't tuck them, we can't say, oh, you know, that's terrible. You have to just welcome it and support people along their journey. And remember, people come from all sorts of lifestyles and cultures and countries. You can't make any judgments on the type of food that they've grown up eating. So we try and make the atmosphere really open and supportive with lots and lots of banter. Also, it gets a bit tougher for us because our food policy, some might say, is really quite anal. Um, we don't have any sugar, any refined sugar in our food. We try and avoid white flour as much as possible. I mean, our food policy is about three pages long. So um, we're, we're quite particular. So it's a tough gig for our teachers because this is super healthy food that's really quite different to what people are used to. But they do a really, really good job. So um, some proof as to whether it's working. And for us, we think it's working pretty well. Um, I'm going to just talk about Patrick. So Patrick is now 84 years old. We first encountered him. He might come up on one of these pictures at some point. Um, he was 82 when we first met him. He was recently a widow. He needed to learn to cook for the first time in his life because his wife had done all the cooking prior to that. So he started attending our cookery classes. Obviously, <laughs> very conventional food taste, meat and two veg. And for an example, good retention is someone coming to six weeks of classes. That's really good commitment. Patrick came to 17 classes, aged 84, which is pretty awesome. And then when he finally left us and said, that's probably going to be my last class, we obviously asked him why, did a bit of an evaluation. And he said, I finally realised you're not going to teach me how to cook sausages and bacon. <laughs> which is why I signed up in the first place. But I've had a really lovely time. I can cook better than I've ever been able to cook in my life. I've realised I really need to eat my greens. I've realised how important vegetables are. I spend less money on meat, and that gives me more money to go down the pub. <laughs> so, you know, it was obviously working for Patrick. Um, besides Patrick, we've, we've managed to achieve some pretty awesome things. So since we started in 2012, we're now working in five children's centres, with this growing all the time. We're contracted to work with Hackney Council Public Health which there might be some people in the room that work for councils, but um, it's a little bit like working with a dinosaur. Um, and yet we're working for them, we're contracted to them with a vegan food policy, which is pretty, pretty amazing, really. 
Um, we work in six different youth centres and we work with over 40 charities and community groups that support disadvantaged and marginalised people. So I hate to sort of lump people into groups like that, but the sorts of people we work with come from groups that support low-income families, recovering addicts, addicted mothers, new mothers, um, newly arrived migrants, children in care, young people about to leave care, young offenders, you name the group and we've worked with them, visually impaired people, hearing impaired people, so we, we really are reaching those groups that we set out to reach in 2012. And we weren't sure whether we would, but we, we really are doing, and that's really quite magical. I just want to share with you a little bit more about our impact. So once people have come on one of our six-week courses, obviously we have to track what the impact is. And overall, we get some pretty amazing results. So we've found that 85% of people that come on our courses eat more fruits and vegetables after attending that 88% of people say they have improved health and well-being, 85% uh, of people say it's improved their mental health through the social interaction, the sharing of food, <coughs> eating better, 89% of people say their cookery skills have improved, and 60% of people say that they now eat a lot less meat, with various anecdotes coming in all the time about people that have given it up altogether. So, these stats really come alive when um, we talk to people, because saying, how did it improve your health and well-being? It's so different for absolutely everyone. So we've had in instances of people's insulin levels going down. So they're diabetic, they don't need to take as much insulin. Blood pressure lowering, um, extreme weight loss, um, you know, mental health conditions improving. It's so very cholesterol levels lowering. It, it really is. It, it's pretty accurate what, what can happen in six weeks. So I'm just going to read a few out. So um, one lady is called Claire Gibson. She last year had a liver and kidney transplant, and she's a type 1 diabetic. And she told us, since coming on your classes, I've felt a huge improvement to my health and well-being. I've changed my diet completely, and it's helped me in a way that none of the other health professionals have managed to help me with. Um, that your local food approach has inspired me and given me a hobby. I can't thank you enough. It certainly beats staying at home and feeling sorry for yourself. So that was from Claire. Um, we had a lovely one from a gentleman called Alexi, who was on our public health funded program. And he said, I've really enjoyed the cooking classes. You've got me really hooked. I'm really onto the cooking bug now. I visited the chicken shop a lot less since I started on your courses. I'm sorry to say I don't think I'll ever be 100% plant-based, but I certainly eat a lot less meat and a lot more veg now. Thank you very much. So, you know, we're, we're realists at Made in Hackney. Not everyone we meet is going to stop eating meat altogether. But, you know, it's part of the journey. And if we can normalise plant-based foods to them, what a plant-based meal looks like, and what it looks like every day of the week, Later down the line, when they perhaps see some more hard-hitting information about animal rights or about the environment and about some of the bigger issues connected to our food choices, they're in a much better place to be able to take that on board because they're already familiar with the food. So we see ourselves as one of the first steps on the journey towards people becoming vegan or just eating a better diet. So finally... I would just like to also say we obviously didn't get everything right. So I can stand up here and sound like we've just had this really smooth journey and it was all very successful. But the group that really likes to keep us on our toes are the teenagers. So whenever we work with young people, especially teenagers, we're never quite sure what's going to happen and what the response to the food is going to be. Um, so we've done exercises with sugar where you count out with sugar cubes how much sugar is in a fizzy drink. Some teenagers are horrified. One teenager said to us, but surely more sugar is better because more sugar, more value. Better value, more sugar. <laughs> yeah, see where you're going with that? More sugar, yeah. Uh, another response we had when doing an exercise where you compare the two labels of homemade lemonade, what they were making in the class, with shop-bought lemonade. Uh, one of the young people said to our teacher class, because it's got loads of long words on it, then it must be better, right? because of the long, the long, the science words, the science words. And then finally, and then our teacher test is really good with young people, and one of the sort of tricks she did is to get a McDonald's hamburger 
and put it in the cupboard of week one of a Hackney Takeaway course, and every week over the six weeks, go and look at the hamburger and see what's happened. Nothing, nothing happens. It stays exactly the same week in, week out. Now, I'm really into whole food plant-based eating. For me, that's really gross. She had to stop the young people eating the burger because they thought this was awesome. You know, so, you, know you can basically get some surprises when you're, when you're teaching. So those kind of interactions have really kept us on our toes. Um, but just to sort of leave you today, if you feel passionate about our cause and you'd like to get involved, there's lots of ways you can do that. We are entering a team into Run Hackney, the Hackney Half Marathon. And we're looking for runners, so if you're a runner or want to be runner, want to train and also want to fundraise, um, please get in touch with us. Um, we're obviously always looking for donations to continue our work, so if you know any rich people, you know where to send them, send them our way. And then uh, also we run masterclasses. Masterclasses are ticketed events, they cost £65, and they're in very specialist things, sort of raw food, sourdough bread making, um, nut cheese making. Can anyone say nut cheese without sniggering? It's just, just me. I can't say that. So nut cheese masterclasses. So by coming to one of these classes, you're helping us support our free community work. So it's sort of a virtuous circle of funding. You're spending £65, but that money enables us to do free community classes. So your money is doing good as well as giving you a ticket for an event. Um, as a sort of final, uh, also there's a raffle tonight, as you know, so please buy some raffle tickets. So I just thought I'd leave you with a final thought from a lady called Cecilia, who lives on the Woodbury Down Estate, and she's from Brazil. She's quite a shy lady, and she attended one of our feedback evenings, didn't say that much, and then at the end of the session, as she was leaving, she pulled me aside, and she said this to me, and I really hope I wrote it down as accurately as I can, because it was really, really moving. But obviously I just had to do it from memory. But this is what she said to me. Um, I'm Brazilian, and I came from a family of really big meat eaters. Meat is everything, all parties, all celebration events. Your classes have really opened my eyes to new ways of eating. Jane, your teacher, has inspired me so much to try new things, to look after my health, and really think about what I'm putting in my mouth. After doing two of your courses, I decided to go vegetarian. Maybe even one day I'll go vegan. It's been six months now, and I feel so much better. I'm more energetic, I've lost weight, I'm clear-headed. But there's something else, something that I can't quite put my finger on, something like, something like not eating the animals. I think I feel at peace now. I think I'm more peaceful. Yes, that's it. Thank you so much for giving me that. That's nice to see you. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I think we have time for a quick Q and A with Sarah. Can you um, pass it up? <laughs> have we got the spare mic? Okay. Great. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> um, are you going to pass? I'm going to run around. With you, you choose. You choose. I can't choose. You choose. Uh, go over there. Okay. Hi. Uh, Hi. I was just wondering. You said you were working with like the public health council. Mm. What What are any specific problems that you've come across with working? with regards to like your message of being like plant-based with actual members of like government? So far, quite amazingly, very little. But that's because we've been really fortunate in um, the Hackney Council Public <coughs> Health team has some really, really progressive people on the team who are, you know, cycling, vegetarian, seem to become vegan, quite right on lefties. And so they really love what we do. So we're really lucky that we found people on that team. But I know... We've, for example, we worked with some youth groups and they would come to us in the morning and cook an amazing nutritionally balanced meal that they'd all eat and on the way out 
their dietitian would come down the stairs and hand out ham sandwiches in white bread with a packet of crisps and a chocolate bar to them for their lunch, which completely undermined what we were teaching them. And then they even went as far as sending us an email saying, I'm a qualified dietitian and I worry that the food you're serving them is not um, adequately serving their health needs. We don't really need to talk about why that's absolutely nonsense. <laughs> but, so we do encounter some very conventional opinions, but much less than we ever would have imagined. And I think it's because of the way we package it up. Yeah. Um, do you have any plans to extend this out to other parts and other boroughs of London? So, we do work all across London, which is a bit confusing, because we're called Made in Hackney, and we originally planned to just work in Hackney, but we now work in Islington, Harringay, Car Hamlets, down in Peckham, East Finchley, so we are all over London. We only have our own kitchen in Hackney, so our own eco-community kitchen is based in Hackney. We would love to have a big flagship eco-community kitchen that people from all over the England could come and visit and see as an example of good practice and go and replicate in their towns. But we're just sort of looking for that £500,000 money drop <laughs> to um, make that happen. But we, yes, we're happy to work wherever we're asked and um, there is plans to expand. But what we'd really like to do is movement build rather than empire build. So all the food groups, community food groups around the UK that are already doing a great job, we'd like to sort of gently and encouragingly train them to just raise their food standards and raise their environmental best practice and sort of give them a leg up really to sort of do what they do but do it better. So we're quite interested in doing that really rather than having a million maidens all around the UK. Have time for one more question? Hello? I think I think the mic. Oh, okay. I've got it, so it must be easier. <laughs> oh my god, this is very simple. I don't think I need the mic. Oh, <laughs> uh, hello everyone. Um, how, <laughs> <laughs> how much does each meal cost to make uh, on average, I guess? On average. So for our classes, we have an average cookery budget of about £25. And that needs to feed between 10 and 17 people, depending who turns up. So sometimes there's quite a bit left over, and um, people take it home in boxes, and sometimes it just about goes round, depending if lots of extra people have turned up and haven't booked on, but we haven't really got the heart to turn away. Um, we're very lucky in Hackney, we have um, affordable organic vegetables from growing communities, which are a super rad local organic veg box scheme and they do a pension of discount, they take healthy start vouchers. So they're actually very affordable, and every year they do a price comparison between organic veg bought with them versus, say, Wait Rose or Asda or Sainsbury's, and they always come out dramatically cheaper. So we're actually very privileged that we can offer organic food in our classes as a viable option for people on a reasonably low income. When we go to other boroughs in London, if no such scheme exists, we can't really promote organic food to those groups because it would be pointless. We can explain what it is and we can maybe use organic flour, perhaps some organic grains, things that you can buy in bulk cheaply, but we can't push it too much because if there's no source, affordable source, then it's just annoying really for people to hear about that. So we do a lot of research and there's about 10 local organic veg box schemes around London at the moment. So quite a lot of areas are covered with projects of that kind. Okay, that's amazing. Thanks for coming along to Evolution speaking. It's, it's amazing to have you. Give it up for Sarah. <laughs>